This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! card review slash discussion type video. As you can see, I've changed my settings around a bit, moved over to the area where I don't have the green screen set up, but... That's actually just a blatant lie, and if you can actually, you know, take the time to look at specifically the edges around my being, is that I am still actually on the green screen. Um, I'm physically looking at the shelves that I'm claiming to be sitting in front of, and the couch there and thereof. Um, I took a picture of the shelves that I was hanging in the area where I'd want it to be a set, so that I could put myself in front of it, because I didn't want to leave the controlled environment of, you know, having the green screen behind me and my computer and all that sort of stuff in front of me, especially given how hard it is to film on that couch in terms of, you know, just me moving around as a person. But anyway, as you can see, I've, uh, I've gotten some, uh, some, you know, a little bit of uh, an improvement to my green screen setup. I don't have nearly as harsh of an outline as I did before. At least I'm hoping that that's not the case. My test runs have been, you know, promising and have shown me the kind of quality that I want to get. The only question is whether or not this comes out in editing in post well enough to be used but if it doesn't hey you'd never know that if you're seeing the video then it worked well enough for my liking but i do plan on improving the lighting rigs around uh that are giving me a more smooth green screen experience and hopefully we can you know get that improved a good amount but anyway that is not what we're here to talk about today what we're here to talk about is a new card that has been spoiled for release in japan that is coming out in the link Vrains pack alongside a bunch of other support cards for legacy support for other decks, specifically giving decks that need Link Monsters, Link Monsters, you know, to allow them to compete. Uh, because there are specific decks, most notably Burning Abyss and Cleefort, that really can't play under Master Rule 4 unless they had gotten a Link Monster, and so this pack sort of, you know, addresses that. It gives them Link Monsters. So, the first card I'm going to be talking about, I'm planning on talking about all of them at some point, and also playing gameplay videos and uh, gameplay footage in general of just multiple decks using those cards because I love all of them in terms of their design but the first one I want to talk about is the one that I've already done some gameplay footage for that is already on the channel and that is Cleefort Genius. This card I may not be the biggest fan of Cleefort as a deck in terms of you know how it plays and all that it seems very you know bare bones basic in terms of how its core function is uh, but Cleefort Genius is just a wonderful card. I cannot you know, I cannot give this card enough praise where it is due. Whoever designed this card at, you know, Konami's R&D of their Japan branch, whoever designed this card is the real genius. Like, this card is a fantastic amount of support for Klee's as well as any generic machine deck. Those are, you know, things like Deskbots, ABCs, uh, even something as far as Dino Mists gets supported by this rather well. And it's just a wonderful card. Uh, it's wonderful in its own deck, and it's also wonderful outside of its own deck. But what does Cleefort Genius do? Well, it is an Earth Link monster, a machine effect monster, and it's a Link 2, and it has two arrows pointing bottom left and bottom right, and has 1800 attack and no defense because it is a Link monster. And its requirements are very generic for machines. It's just two machine type monsters, period, full stop. So this can be used in literally any machine type deck from the past, as well as ones coming out in the future. I really, really like this. I like these generic-ish Link monsters that obviously shine in their own deck, but can be used in other places. But, it has three very important effects, and none of them are hard once per turns. And its first effect is this Link Summon card is unaffected by spell or trap effects and by activated effects from other Link monsters. So that's actually really good. That's very good, in fact, because if the game progresses more and more towards a Link monster-heavy format, especially with how good of a card Firewall Dragon is in particular, this card being unaffected by all Link Monsters activated effects and by spells and traps makes this card very, very strong. It's a very much a Towers-like card. Very, very, very indicative of the artwork on the card of basically, you know, Towers and the Cleefort like stuff just being in ruins around it. And this, uh, this, uh, like, Esper, this shadow, this, uh, spirit type thing coming out of the ruins. But if the format continues to progress into more of a Link monster-based focus where more and more decks come out that have prime, you know, usage of the extra deck is Link monsters, this card can basically become more and more powerful as the game progresses onward because it will become more and more of a Towers-like monster, especially since Apocalyphort Towers is not unaffected by Link monsters. So this is a wonderful bit of support and it also just pays, it pays homage very, very effectively 
to the cards that came before it, to its predecessors, if you will. Uh, being, you know, the entire Cleefort engine, the entire Cleefort, you know, thing being unaffected by monsters of the same level or rank or lower, and then towers and sky base being, like, unaffected by those sorts of cards and stuff like that. Just having generic immunity to a very wide uh, range of cards in the game. But its other effect, second effect, is once per turn you can target one other face-up card you control and one face-up card your opponent controls. Both cards have their effects negated until the end of this turn. Now, this card is very good. This effect is very good for the application because it negates any face-up card your opponent controls. You can negate their anti-spells. You can negate their floodgates. You can negate their monster effects that are being problematic. Specifically, you could summon this kind of card like Cleefort Genius into like a field with a firewall dragon on it that's loaded, and then you could use Cleefort Genius to negate the firewall dragon. And the firewall dragon has no say in the matter because the firewall dragon cannot affect Cleefort Genius. So at the very end of the day, you're going to keep Cleefort Genius, and that's going to be, you know, very good for you to progress forward with your game plan. And like I said, you can already negate Floodgates, negate problematic face-up cards on the board that your opponent has. But also, in the Cleefort deck specifically, you can summon your dudes from your extra deck or normal summoning them from your hand or pendulumming them from hand or whatever, and they become level 4s and their attack goes down. You can use this effect to negate their effect and boost them back up to their original stats. So this is just one of those things that really shines in the Cleefort deck as well, because it allows you to reset your monster's stats, you know, rather efficiently, rather easily, but then also it allows you access into negating your opponent's face-up cards that could be problematic at whatever point in time that you are uh, dealing with them. So that's really, really good. But the last effect is the one that I like the most and is arguably the best one on this card, and it is when two monsters are special summoned at the same time to the zones this card points to, you can add one level 5 or higher machine monster from your deck to your hand. Now, that is great. That is fan, 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 fantastic uh, in terms of what it allows you to do in Klee's as well as other decks like, you know, desk bots, like ABC, all that sort of stuff. Um, in Klee specifically, this synergizes with your Pendulum Summon because you're going to be you know, using two Klee monsters to go into this card, meaning they're going to go face up into your extra deck, you can then pendulum them into the zones that this provides you, which then allows you to get another search, basically making this card another sacrifice, another scout, which is very important for the deck in general. But this also synergizes with Cleefort Disc. You can tribute summon Disc and special summon two Klees out of your deck into the zone specifically where this card exists and get a search. That's great. That has great implications for the Klee deck, that has great implications for every other you know, sort of thing you can do with this deck, you know, Penduluming Klee's from your hand, from your extra deck, into the zones it opens for you to summon from your extra deck, which is rather important. But then even in other decks, like ABC, you can tag out ABC Dragon Buster and summon B, C, or an A, any combination of the two, into the two zones this card points to, immediately search for a level 5 or higher machine. This could be anything like the Kaiju, like Jizakiru, or it could be something like Galaxy Soldier to, you know, just further your ABC playline and make something like Cyber Dragon Infinity or something of the sort. There's a lot of different, you know, applications that this can be used for in that deck. Same thing with Desk Bots. The other machine deck you could usually, you know, realistically run this card in is that you could machine dupe a Desk Bot 2, summon two Desk Bot 2s from your deck into the zones this points to. You could attack something with a Desk Bot 4. End of damage step. Special the two monsters off Desk Bot 4 into the zones this points to. Search any of your higher level Desk Bot scales like 7, 8, 6, or 5, or search Desk Bot 9 if it's in your build. There's a bunch of different things you have access to, on top of the fact that uh, Despots itself also has access to Pendulum cards. You can special summon, you know, your things from hand in that nature as well. There's a lot of cool applications that this card has, and I'm really happy that it works very well in Klee, but it's also just generic machine support. All of these Link monsters that are coming out in the Link Reigns pack that we've seen thus far sort of fall in this same sort of line as well. Like, they're very clearly meant for one specific deck in terms of how they function the best, but then they're also abusable and splashable in other decks that somewhat fall into the same line, and that's really good. I'm really glad that Klee and Burning Abyss specifically are decks that got Link monsters in this set, because they are two decks that specifically, as I touched on before, could not play under Master Rule 4. Specifically Klee, the Klee restriction that the scales provide you with, of you cannot negate the effect of the scales 
that also prevents you from summoning anything that's not Cleefort monsters, that was a huge downside. You had to go back to relying on things like Wavering Eyes to clear your scales, or Perform Pal Trample Links even to bounce your scout after you Pendulum Summoned, just to be able to make Link monsters, just to be able to perform the core mechanic of your deck, which is being able to Pendulum Summon from the extra deck in any sort of, you know, good amount of capacity, essentially. It was, it was really problematic to try and, you know, establish that sort of play strength. It was very, very, very much problematic, in fact. And so getting a Cleefort monster that can be special summoned with the scales up, that also provides you, you know, an added benefit, two added benefits at that, because it gets you searches, opens up extra deck slots, and then it also gives you a third benefit of being able to negate face-up cards. That's fantastic. But then also the Burning Abyss card, as well, allowing you to be able to play with BA monsters, those, those, the, all these cards in this Link Brains pack are actually just really, really well constructed for the themes that they're built around, but I'll talk about that more in detail as I start covering each specific card, and as I start playing with each specific card in their respective decks, or in the decks that they're capable of being put into. So, for example, Clee Four Genius, I really am enjoying playing it in Klee right now, I've got a few more videos of that going up one is going up today alongside this video and then another one is going out tomorrow then even like decks like abc and desk bots like i've already said like i've always enjoyed playing desk bots when available to me as an option to play so clue for genius works well on that so expect some videos on that in the future as well as some other link monsters including my favorite from the uh, from the pack the uh, hieratic link monster which should be uh, my favorite one for obvious reasons if you are a long time fan of the channel or if you're just a new time fan but have really really come to know me in terms of uh, how I like to operate things, specifically in the Dragoonity faction. But anyway, let me know what you guys' thoughts are on this card in the comments down below. I love this card. I love what this card allows for machine decks as well as Klee's. Like I said, I don't enjoy the Klee theme nearly as much as the next person might. It just seems kind of like bland in terms of how it specifically like deals with things. Uh, it doesn't really give you a huge amount of... Um, of like a ceiling height but other decks that this card can be played in also have increased ceilings like abc and desk bots and stuff like that as well as even dino mists possibly get a huge boost from this kind of card under mr4 because dino mists you know is still a functional deck and it just gets better with this card so but anyway as always guys thanks for watching like comment subscribe do all the nonsense you usually do links as always are in the description down below to my facebook fan page as well as my personal patreon page if you like the videos I've been doing as of lately and want to support my ability to continue making these types of videos and continue making videos in general, then Patreon is the best way to do so, as well as if you're interested into getting into my private Discord server for the channel, or if you're interested in monthly Yu-Gi-Oh! product giveaways, then Patreon is definitely something you'd like to go check out the reward tiers for if you're interested in any of that. And any support you'd like to give the channel, I thank you in advance for in general, because it helps out a ton, like I've said many times in the past. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching, thanks for your time, let me know your opinions and thoughts in the comments down below. And as always, take care, guys. I will see you in the next video. But anyway, now the video is over, I'd like to give special thanks to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, and Troy Perkins, as well as everybody else that's currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You guys help out a lot more than you may know, and you have my eternal gratitude as always. Thank you so much for the support, guys. You guys are awesome.